Hi, good morning guys and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And last night we actually had Alcoa earnings come out at seven cents on the share uh, versus two cents as expected. So they managed to smash expectations. But as you'll be able to see from a technical perspective, it's not had massive ramifications on the US market. We also had um, some uh, news last night coming from the fact that Obama and Yellen had an uncharacteristic meeting yesterday. They don't usually get the chance to, to catch up to talk about economic risks and policy. Apparently, Obama says he's very, very happy uh, with the uh, with the, pro the processes that Yellen is putting into place, um, which uh, does, to be honest, in the market usually raise a few eyebrows when they come out with a statement like that, when obviously not everything is exactly going according to plan. The other aspects that are being discussed just now is the strength of the US dollar uh, and its impact on US earnings, which uh, many commentators still feel is going to come in a little bit worse than, than expected. Even last quarter, there's a lot of revisions down for forward guidance and people are expecting similar uh, processes today. Uh, well, not today, but as the US earnings season continues. And um, as we get more earnings, some firms do then give a little bit more insight as to where they think things will go next quarter. And uh, a number of commentators think this will continue to get revised down. Now, a uh, weaker US dollar is good for US earnings. In the, in the basis that it kind of inflates the, the earnings when you're repatriating funds back to, uh, back to the US from, from the other global markets. But um, when you have Japan really struggling with a stronger yen and Europe really struggling with a stronger euro, it does have a bit of a knock-on effect when you're dealing with the global economy because obviously if the eurozone and Japan are really struggling because of currency aspects, then they're kind of spending slightly less money anyway and their economic activity isn't as strong, which in itself leads on to a little bit of a, an impact in the US. So it does become a little bit of a zero-sum game. Uh, nobody really wants to have uh, two aggressive currency wars out there because really there isn't any true winners and uh, any kind of move in the FX markets tends to be quite fleeting anyway as the market just ends up picking a direction. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. So that's pretty much what most um, kind of fundamentals are, are, are coming across the market right now. Let's go ahead and have a look at things from a technical perspective. So as ever, guys, we're starting off with the US 30. And you'll be able to see by these candles here that we, we had an attempt to actually try and break up that little bit higher, only then for it to get pushed back down right back into negative territory. Again, not a very... Um, bullish candle that we have here. Now, it has stopped pretty much bang on that 21 period uh, SMA. And we do have a little bit of a, of a green candle this morning. 68% of CMC market clients are currently short. As you can see, the slow stochastic there has broken below that 80% level. So that's adding a little bit of negative pressure. Um, if we get a move and a close below the 21 period SMA, that's when things maybe get a little bit more uh, pressured for the US 30. You could be looking at the tips of these candles here around about 17, 4, 15 and change. And if we get a protracted sell off, you might be looking, if we just go back here just ever so slightly, you might be looking around about 17,038 as the next potential support. Moving on to the UK 100, and uh, you can see the UK 100 still trading within this really kind of narrow range. Uh, it had a failure to, to break through and close beyond uh, 62.20, back in negative territory, again supported by that 21 period SMA. And you can just see the green candle there um, just popping its head, having, trying to have another re-challenge at 62.20. If we get a break and close above that, you could be looking at 63.27 as that next potential support. Though to be honest, it's not that strong. It was a support uh, back in 2015 and uh, in summertime, but we've had quite a few number of, of, of head pokes uh, beyond that. To be fair, you probably would look to uh, engage the tip of that candle, which isn't really that far away, if I'm completely honest, uh, as the next uh, as the next potential support level, a next potential resistance level to challenge. And then you would certainly be looking at the tips of these candles. So I'm actually going to go ahead and draw that in right now. And uh, I think we will actually take there. We didn't get a close above there. And uh, we do have a long way to go. In fact, would, I, would you even take this? Arr. No, I think we'll just stick with this for now. That's probably a, a slightly easier level to uh, to get to grips with. So we're quite a good bit away from there just now. There are multiple levels of resistance to, uh, to, to look at. I'm actually just going to go ahead and get rid of those at the moment because they're just adding a little bit too much noise. Same with this as well. And um, we'll, we'll keep an eye at this, uh, at this channel formation. And we look to draw the other support and resistance levels if we look to rechallenge 60, 70. 51% of CMC Marks clients currently long, showing a, a kind of a lack of direction right now. But there has been a lot, <coughs> a lot of touches of this potential resistance level. And uh, we'll see if that consolidation will be rewarded with a breakout. 
So moving on to Japan, 225. Uh, Japan, 225, in the middle of two ranges. Not massively exciting uh, to many traders right now because uh, there aren't very many clear um, kind of entry points if you're not already trading the Japan 225. You could look at the tip of this candle here as being a potential support, but it has already broken through there a couple of times. Um, the tips of these candles are indicative of selling pressure. To be honest, the Japan 225, you're kind of really trading dollar yen. Uh, so that might actually be a slightly better market to look at if you're looking for uh, more efficient entry and exit positions. Um, you could look at the tip of this candle here as providing another level of support. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and draw that in at the moment um, to see how it looks. And arguably, you could say that this level around about 15,796 uh, was a potential support slash resistance level. And it's on the right side of that right now. So if that's the case, you could be looking at an acceleration towards 16,384. You are seeing a, a kind of a, a downtrend on the slow stochastic. The downwards momentum on the MACD is slowing down. Uh, and we do have a death cross on the moving averages, which normally would be a negative signal. And we do have currently 84% of CMC market clients are currently long. Moving on to, uh, to dollar yen. And uh, you can just see that it's still, it's still not in a great position. Uh, now, we are in green territory so far today, positive territory so far. 64% of CMC market clients are currently uh, long. Uh, we're around about 108. Uh, 105 spot 42 is a longer term potential um, support level. As you can see, you have to go quite far back before you can uh, before you can get to see that. That's back in 2014. Um, that kind of gives you a bit of an idea how the yen is strengthening against the US dollar at the moment. Um, and it's, it has fairly come off, to be honest. So in the middle of two ranges right now, if you're not already trading dollar yen, it's kind of hard to get yourself a decent entry point. You could look at the tips of these candles here as being potential support. And if it breaks below that, you could try and trade the momentum breakout towards 105. Um, but that's a lot of ifs. So moving on to crude oil, West Texas. Um, you can see we've had a, it's so volatile. It's, it goes up, sells off, goes up. 40 spot 79 will be the potential resistance level. Um, and as you can see, we're just going to slow, slowly grind up towards towards here. Then traders pretty much have a decision to make. Will the think this resistance will hold and then trade it short all the way back down to 37 spot 56? Or will you trade the breakout um, where you're maybe not going to get a huge amount of potential upside before you come to potential resistance. You could be looking at 42 and change. Um, we'll maybe have a look at that in the next couple of days. We, there does look to be that there was potential support just below $43. Historically, you can just see it across here. In fact, I'm just going to add that in at the moment. Uh, we can come back and check that out at a later date. But that certainly was um, an area where there was buying interest historically. And that would give you a couple of extra bucks that you could potentially pull out of uh, of crude oil West Texas should the <coughs> excuse me should um, crude have the fundamentals to back it up as well. Moving on to gold to finish things up, um, still had this potential head and shoulders formation though we're not getting any break of the neckline uh, at all. We're quite far away from there. In fact, uh, the tips of these candles are indicative of selling interest as we get that little bit higher above twelve sixty. 74% of CMC Marks clients are currently long. Um, oh, it's a bit of a tough one to get, an, to get an idea on. You could have a kind of a descending triangle formation and that ascending triangle formation at some point, but there's just not enough data points up here. It's, it's too raggedy to uh, be able to draw a potential uh, resistance level along the top as of yet. So um, trading by, by both moving out averages, you do have a bullish crossover on the MACD. Uh, but it's a bit of a tough one to trade right now. Moving on to Euro Dollar and GBP USD. So Euro Dollar slowly grinding a little bit higher towards one spot, 1489. 84% um, of CMC Marks clients are currently short. Uh, we're, the slow stochastic is going back in the positive territory, above 80%, sorry. We didn't get our negative crossover on the MACD. And uh, as you can just see here, it is just slowly grinding higher. So the Euro is getting a little bit of strength, continuing to gain a little bit of strength against the US Dollar. Um, but it's not going great guns. Obviously, the closer we get to one spot 1489, uh, that's when we might get some more action. And finishing up with GBP USD, 59% of CMC market clients are currently short. We could have a descending triangle formation beginning to form right here. Uh, I'm going to take the, tip, oh, take the tip of this candle right here instead. Um, so we might have a potential support level here, a sloping resistance level here. We are getting a, a big kind of wave formation within this area. And then you'll either get a breakout here or a breakout down here. We could be looking at that. Um, the other technicals are actually completely neutral. Um, Sterling had a, a decent day yesterday. 
It's got a little bit of uh, further momentum this morning, but nothing too special. Potentially capped by those moving averages. And we finish up with the market calendar. And uh, as you'll be able to see, we've only got uh, CPI in the UK still to come. German uh, CPI came in as expected. We've got trade balance from China at nighttime. Retail sales, petroleum data sales on Wednesday. Thursday, you've got CPI interest rates announcement from the UK. That's not really going to be that exciting. CPI and employment claims. And then finishing up Friday, more Chinese data. Uh, so actually a fair amount of Chinese data this week. And then industrial production. And then we finish up the week with the Consumer Sentiment Survey, University of Michigan data as well. Well, guys, that's it from me just now. Very good luck with your trading. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.